Welcome back, friends. Yes, the gift of the fruitful gift. When our Lord gives commands, all right. I said we're going to go into Gianna, but here we're going to have a, another a little bit of diversion. We're used to when people give us commands, is it some sort of a burden or um, lording yeah. over us? But when our Lord gives us a command, it's really totally 100% for our own good. He doesn't command us ever to do something that's, that's not in our absolute ultimate best interest. And um, to be fruitful, to be open to to children, uh, which is a command, right? Be fruitful, most that didn't that that's never been abrogated. Um, right. Is for our best good. It really is. Okay, Gianna Mola. On December the eighth, in nineteen fifty four, the Marian year, on the one hundredth anniversary of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, uh, Gianna received an inner light in favor of her marrying. So like Zelly, she has this interior um, locution. The bride and group prepared themselves for their upcoming marriages by confession and receiving Holy Communion. Um, the book mentioned a tritium of prayer, but unsure of it. So, okay, so we're back to this book. It, it talked about a tritium of prayer that they undertook, but I wasn't quite sure exactly. It didn't uh, define that too, too, so I wasn't not sure what that was. Um, so Gianna had a beautiful wedding gown, wedding gown, and so that's different to Zelly, who was more modest in her clothing, even though she worked with the most exquisite of lace, made, made the most exquisite of lace. And her reason was that she hoped that a son of hers would use it in his priestly vestments. So that was that was in her mind. In their home, from the beginning, there was a devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the daily recitation of the Rosary, regardless of travel commitments. Pietro, so he, so we're back in the '60s. So Pietro asked his young wife to stay home, but she refused. She practiced medicine until her death. She became pregnant quickly as they were um, 33 and 43 years. So they were in later years and she knew if they were going to have children, they needed to <laughs> get on with it, as it were. They would have four children and two miscarriages within the six and a half years of marriage. All of her deliveries and pregnancies were difficult. On the fourth pregnancy, a dangerous cyst was discovered on her uterus. She forewent any treatment to save herself for fear of harming her fourth child. Gianna, Pietro, and loved ones prayed earnestly for her health and continuation of life. Gianna also made preparations for her children to be cared for by, her, by two of her sisters, a pharmacist and a professed sister. Her death was especially hard on her husband, but both said yes to the unfathomable will of God. She was transferred from the hospital to the room where she happily began her married life and died within 24 hours. All right. Um, um, and then we'll go into the official miracle in the canonization decree. Yeah, I mean, what a... She is... To, to lay down your life for a friend is the greatest action of love that a Christian can endure. But how much more profoundly beautiful than when a mother does that for her own child? Um, you know, Gianna Baratamola was was gifted to do something that we all know that Our Lady would have done in a heartbeat, right? Because uh, we know that when she, as you were saying before, that when she accepted, when she gave her great fiat, in the secular world that she was living in and among the, the Jewish priests and, and the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, adultery would have been punished by stoning. Mm -hmm. And so even upon accepting her fiat, she accepted her death. She did not know, you know how things were going to come about, but she trusted in, our, in God's will. 
and and I can't help but think, especially because that that delivery. When did Gianna die? Nineteen sixty-eight. Somewhere um, around yeah. there. Yeah. I know it's somewhere right around there. Yes. 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 We have this this absolute antithesis of the mother who who lays down her life for her child just on the cusp of women who are going to demand the right to lay down the life of their child for the life of the mother. That's right. And now that, that's the sin, right? That's the culture yeah, to the sanctity. Right. That's it's, what it certainly is. is. And she's such a she's such a beacon of light to us for that very reason. Uh, you know, our Lord often will give us a precursor, right, or a prefiguration. Yeah, 1968. Of, that's right. Or, of what of what should be done, right? Because I think in 1968 is not very long after before that, or like immediately in that area is when New York in, initially legalizes abortion. But I think it's already been legalized in some of the other, you know, like the Russia and communist countries. I mean, you've had abortion for years and years, and I know that they were fighting for it very, very hard in France. I can't imagine they were, they were fighting for it any less in, in Italy at the time, you know, these, these secularist modernists who devalue women and, and in such a, such a horrifyingly evil way that they make the woman the, the instrument of the destruction of her own child. Um, but, but Beretta Mola stands for us as a, as a real prefiguration of the true, the true mother. That's right. That's right. So let's take a look at the official miracle, which was required for Gianna's beatification. It took place at the hospital founded by Gianna's brother, Father Alberto, and was in Brazil. And this is the place where Gianna discerned being a medical missionary and where she would later meet her future husband. In 1977, a young Protestant woman was in the hospital in Graju, Brazil, dying shortly after giving birth to a stillborn baby. An unforeseeable yet very serious, serious complication had caused a vaginal abscess, which was inoperable in the hospital, requiring that the patient be transported to a specialized hospital in San Luis, located more than six, 600 kilometers away. The young woman would never have survived the trip. A nurse, sister, Verdina de Ma Manios, a Capuchin sister, very concerned due to the painful situation of the patient, turned in prayer to the Gianna Beretta Mola in order that through her intercession, see there's that active participation of the saints, the dying mother be freed from her pain and the dramatic voyage to San Luis be avoided. Looking at a small photo of the servant of God, she prayed, you who are the sister of Father Alberto, who founded the hospital, make this fistula heal and keep this woman from having to tra travel to Sao Luis. Sister Bernadine invited two other nurses to unite themselves in this partition. Immediately, according to the testimony of the patient, her troubles did not only diminish, but they completely disappeared. On April, the 11th, 1978, Cardinal Giovanni Colombo and 16 bishops of the Lombardy Episcopal Conference requested of Pope John Paul II the introduction of the cause of beatification of the servant of God, Gianna Beretta Mola. In their postulatory letter, the bishops implored the glorification of the spouse and mother, describing her, so here's, here's the key, uh, takeaway, a model of complete reality to this world prone to misconstrue and refute the right of life. That's the contra to the sense, like Sarah was saying, the degree of her 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 herosity of virtues was issued in July of 1991 and in December 1992, the proclamation of validity of the miracle was issued. Um, we'll stop there with a few comments and then we'll fit. We have one more thing to finish up with Mullen in another episode. Yeah, I mean, just a, a profound 
God knew what we need, right? I mean, he, God knows what we need and he supplies the need before you need it, right? I mean, so uh, what a what a work of mercy for us that the heroic virtue of a mother is going to be the remembered, the way that we remember what it truly is to be a mother, right? And many people now, many mothers who have found themselves in similar situations have her as a role model. Uh, and many have made recourse to her, either through prayers, making the same level of sacrifice. Um, and and any time that, that a mother does something like that, we have to remember that we are talking about heroic virtue, right? No one is required to do these things. Um, you cannot directly will the death of your child. Um, but in an instance like that, you know, if the uterus had had to be removed to to save the life of, of Gianna Beretta Mola, uh, this would have been allowed, it would have been permitted um, because of uh, the principle of second, uh, second effect. Um, but what a, what a mercy to, to, to those of us who have been um, really, you know, fighting our whole lives for an end to abortion, to have had her as an intercessor uh, during these very, very difficult and trying years. Very true. Let's take a look at the ceremony and what John Paul will say um, on Mother's Day. Till then, my friends, fides, adratio.